thyroid cancer is a diagnosis that often presents as an asymptomatic, palpable, uh, incidental finding. So a lot of people come in without even really noticing uh, anything, any lump on their thyroid, um, and they can be palpated on exam. Or some of these people come in with a, a lump that they have palpated. There are some symptomatic thyroid nodules. Um, the symptoms come in two forms, either compressive symptoms, which the size of the mass compresses uh, the esophagus or the airway. So you can get some neck pain, uh, problems swallowing, and hoarseness. Um, also, these thyroid nodules can be uh, hormone producing and you can get uh, CNS effects of increased thyroid hormone and as well as car cardiac effects like tachycardia. Now the biggest concern of course is whether or not these nodules are uh, malignant. So there are the malignant nodules include papillary, follicular, medullary, and anaplastic the most common benign thyroid nodules are hyperplastic and colloid. And then, of course, there are uh, thyroid nodules that, as mentioned, produce thyroid hormone. And uh, those are known as toxic adenomas or hot nodules. So, um, in addition to the type of uh, nodule that you can get. Uh, there are different symptomatic uh, constellations that can be noted with uh, thyroid issues. So Graves' disease is an autoimmune disorder where um, an antibody Target, targets the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor and activates it. Uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis also can present early as a hyperthyroid but for a different reason. Uh, autoimmune antibodies uh, attack and um, cause inflammation of the thyroid gland and thyroid hormone is often released. A toxic nodule is a neoplastic uh, nodule in which uh, the neoplastic cells retain their function of secreting thyroid, thyroid hormone um, but lack the control of regulation by thyroid stimulating hormone. A multi nodule nodular goiter. Uh, often it's a result of uh, iodine deficiency but can produce a hyperthyroid state when uh, iodine is reintroduced into the diet. Thyroiditis uh, is usually a hypothyroid condition including ha Hashimoto's which as we mentioned can present early on as a hyperthyroid condition uh, De Quervain's renals and acute superative thyroiditis are also uh, conditions in which generally we end up with a hypothyroid condition. So first uh, you're going to do an ultrasound guided biopsy. Hypo, uh, microcalcifications and hypoecogenicity Irregular margins, height versus width, intranodal vascularity are all uh, things which are noted on an ultrasound. You can also do a CT without contrast or an MRI with contrast. Medical management can be used uh, in non-malignant conditions. 
to stem the effects of uh, toxic nodules. These things can also be watched if they are instant findings with no malignant potential. Um, indications for surgery, of course, are malignancy um, or those in which you cannot determine the malignant potential. And then if you're getting a lot of symptoms, also if uh, there is a displacing uh, aesthetic appearance. So the main structures that are involved are the platysma, the sternal hyoid, sternal thyroid muscles that need to be moved out of the way. The recurrent laryngeal nerve courses uh, close to the thyroid and should be avoided, as well as the carotid artery has been affected by thyroid surgery. Those things of course can be damaged leading to laryngeal nerve damage or hematoma ser seroma. Um, it's also common to damage the parathyroid uh, both because of direct damage to the parathyroid and uh, arterial damage or blood supply damage. Um, that can lead to perioral tingling, trostec sign, and troso sign, which are all signs of hyper hypercalcemia. Uh, generally, there's a quick recovery. Hormone replacement can be necessary in those who have uh, had a toxic adenoma in which their normal tissue has been downregulated. Or those in which the whole thyroid has been removed. If there is a malignant condition, then these people need to be examined immediately. Um, thyroid suppressive therapy. I'm not quite sure why we need that. Radioactive.